Hey, it's Zach from How Chew. If you've ever popped in your favorite retro gaming cartridge only to discover that your save files are gone, then there's a good chance that that cartridge contains a battery. Old systems like the NES, SNES, Game Boy, and N64 contained a small battery that actually kept the memory alive in a volatile state. In this short video, I'll teach you how to change that battery so you can get back to playing. Now in the video description, you'll find a list of the tools and materials you need to repair your specific cartridge. Okay, I'll quickly go through everything you're gonna need for the project. So you're gonna need a replacement battery. This has like tabs pre-soldered to it. You can't solder directly to a battery yourself without some kind of sonic welder. So um, just buy one that has tabs already on it. You're gonna need the game that you wanna repair, some solder. These are Nintendo security screwdrivers. They're like a weird little flower shape. So you can use these to open your cartridges. It's about five bucks for the set. If you don't have them, you can make your own, which I'll cover later. This is a solder sucker, so you'll need something that'll remove the solder from uh, the board. And there are a couple different kinds. This one's like $5 also, and it's basically like plunger activated, so you heat up the solder and you push the button and it pulls the solder out. You can also use a desoldering braid, although I've never gotten these to work properly. You're supposed to be able to heat it up and it like, I don't know, the solder sticks to this instead of whatever you're soldering to. These do not work well. You can also use a desoldering iron, which is like a soldering iron that has a hole in the end and a vacuum pump. And when you push a button, it sucks the solder out. And those are really great, but they're like hundreds of dollars. So you probably don't have one of those. You're also gonna want a pair of helping hands to help hold the board. If you don't have one of these, you can probably clamp it to your table or tape or something, but these are inexpensive and a great investment that you'll use over and over again. And finally, you'll need some kind of soldering iron. Okay, now the replacement battery you choose, there are a couple different sizes. Um, depending on what you're working on. So the Game Boy uses these smaller CR2025 batteries that have tabs on them. And then other systems like the N64 use the larger CR2032. This is actually the same one that's probably in your remote for your car, but this has tabs pre-soldered on it. All right, here's my copy of Pokemon I found at a pawn shop. Got a great deal on it and the game won't save. So the reason that these games don't save is actually because they use volatile memory as opposed to non-volatile memory. So volatile memory just basically means that whatever you're storing on the device, it requires constant power in order to remember the data. So like the little CMOS battery on your motherboard, the purpose of that is to save your BIOS settings so that when you unplug your computer, it doesn't lose the settings every time. So there's also non-volatile memory, which is things like SD cards and your actual hard drive. Now. The reason that they used volatile memory back then for things like this is because it was just way cheaper. Memory chips have come way down uh, in price and so, but back then it was cheaper to just throw a, a battery in here. Now not all games use batteries for memory storage. So here is Super Mario 64 for the N64. And you can see this has its own dedicated memory chip which was more expensive, but there are still tons of games that use batteries in them as well. And you can Google your game and it'll come up with a list of the, the uh, games for that system that use the battery. So you'll know whether or not um, you can change it. And you can even ask your Google Home which games. Hey Google, which N64 games use batteries? Here's a summary from the website howto.com. List of N64 games that use a battery. 1080 snowboarding Neat. Uh, or else you can just open the cartridge up now this uses a tiny little memory chip the BU 9850 so if your Super Mario 64 game wasn't saving then you could just find this chip online and desolder it and replace it it'd be pretty obvious like if there's no battery just google each of the chips this is probably like a security lockout chip and then this would be the memory chip but you can google like whatever's written on on them and it'll come up exactly what they are and then you can you can buy one okay there are a couple different size security screwdrivers i'm gonna start with the game boy game so if you don't want to buy these guys uh, i use them all the time so it's worth it for me but if you don't want to buy them you, and you have an old toothbrush lying around you can make your own with uh some success okay so after removing the one screw from the game boy game the back just pops off and now you can see our battery here it should have the year printed on it so this was from May of 2000 is when this was manufactured, which would make sense for Pokemon. So, wow. Yeah, this battery is uh, almost 20 years old, so no surprise it doesn't work anymore. 
So this is a CR2025, which is a little bit thinner than a 2032, and you can see it has the tabs already pre-soldered. So when you put helping hands on anything like this, try not to like crush anything or anything that you're gonna jerk and pull these little traces. So I just try to find a little safe area to, to clamp it to. Now, if you've, ever, if you've never used a solder sucker before, it's actually really easy. You just push the plunger down. We'll heat up the old solder. And then at the same time, you put it on there and you press the button. And it'll pull the solder. You might have to do it a few times. And then eventually this battery will just release and then we can solder our new one on. It's actually like a really fast and easy project. Now, if you don't have a soldering iron, I mean, I recommend picking one up, learn how to solder, watch a few YouTube videos. It's pretty easy. Now, one other thing that people have asked before is if you already have a game on this that you want to preserve, like how do you change the battery if this battery were still good but about to go and you're afraid you're gonna lose your save files, like how do you put a new battery on without losing them? Well, you actually can, and all you need is a few bits of wire. So you'd solder a wire here and a wire here. So now you have this good battery that's temporarily maintaining power, and then you can desolder the old battery carefully so that this new wire doesn't come off and then solder the new battery on and then desolder these wires. So you'll need to use two batteries, but it is actually completely possible. All right, so just go ahead and heat up the solder and use the solder sucker. And you'll have to do it a few times. You know, it might be helpful if it's a little stubborn to just stick a screwdriver or something in here and lightly pry up while you're, while you're heating up the soldering iron. Okay, now pay close attention to the orientation of where this is because there's a positive and a negative. And then place the new battery the same way. And then just heat it back up with a little bit of fresh solder. That's it. Fresh batteries. Okay, so I'm gonna put Pokemon back together and then I'll show you how to do the other cartridges. Obviously it's the same process, but you're gonna use like a slightly bigger battery and you might have to desolder from the back. So this is a surface mount battery that we just put in here, which has these two flat tabs and it just mounts to the surface. Surface, sorry. Um, and then these CR2032s, they have like little pins that you actually stick through holes and then you'll solder it from the back. So it's a little bit different. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a Super Nintendo cartridge. This is Super Mario Kart, great game. All right, this one has screws on the front. So I'm guessing that games that require a bigger save file were more likely to use a battery. This is just my educated guess, probably because the larger memory chips would be more expensive. I don't think Super Mario Kart would have a necessarily large save file, but maybe. Okay, so you can see here our CR2032. You can read it on there. And there are two tabs on the back that you'll need to desolder. Now one thing a lot of people don't realize about soldering irons is it's really easy to heat soak them and also uh, you know, oxidize the tip. So you should never leave it on when you're not soldering. So even between you know, soldering here, I'm turning it off and always keep it tinned, which basically means to just put a little bit of solder on the end. And then I have this little trash can cleaner thing, stick it in, kind of cleans the tip while also you know, spreading this. So you always have to have solder on the tip of your soldering iron or it'll, it'll oxidize even if it's not on. So always make sure that it has a nice, uh, fresh coat, put it away, and when you're not soldering, turn it off. But I'm gonna turn it back on because this is almost desoldered, just not quite yet. This is another one where it would be convenient to stick a screwdriver in the back here, but before it pops off, I wanna remember the orientation. So the strip goes off to the right when you're looking at it this way. I'm just applying a little downward pressure while I'm heating this up so I can pull the rest out. Don't burn yourself with the soldering iron. Son of a B. Well, this one's really stubborn. What a freaking pain that was. Okay, so you should have some nice clean holes now. If you don't, you can use the solder sucker to remove additional solder, but you should be able to see through them. Okay, now we're gonna take our new battery, the th CR2032. Remember the positive side goes off to the right. Okay, so just stick that in place. And then what I like to do is bend the feet back a little bit to kind of hold it while I solder it. There you go, nice. So I don't think I need to cover the uh, N64 one and beat a dead horse anymore while my soldering iron heats up. Uh, I'll just show you how to open the N64 cartridge and you can do that battery on your own. So undo the screws, lift it off and down, remove this RF shield. This is here obviously to prevent electromagnetic interference. 
um, from messing with your game and vice versa. I'm surprised to see that they don't have this RF shield on the SNES or NES games. I don't know, I guess they hadn't figured it was an issue yet back then. See, same battery, same configuration, CR2032. This one's from August of 1998. That's great. It's pretty remarkable though that these batteries, what's nice about these is they don't leak. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they can leak, but they're very unlikely to leak. So otherwise all these games would be ruined and corroded all the time and that's not really an issue. The issue that we usually have is like with old Game Boys, people leaving the batteries in those for a really long time, you throw it in a drawer or an attic and forget about it and then it leaks all over the board and then the entire thing can be ruined. Um, and that's because those like double A alkaline batteries are really leakable. Okay, so my soldering iron's all done. The last thing to do is solder these tabs. Now, if you're not great at soldering, I would not be deterred. This is the kind of project that's perfect for learning. It's really hard to screw these things up and it's not as hard as you think. You only have to do it a few times and you can start to master it. I'm, I'm by no means a master, but I've done it enough times. So that's pretty much it. This is how to restore your save games. Well, I hope you learned a little bit about soldering and I hope you learned a little bit about volatile memory. And if you have any retro game that won't save, then it's probably the battery. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to subscribe. We have other great videos that you can go and check out. And as always, thank you very much for watching.